take the tower we had before and simplify the equations of motion and plug them into MATLAB to solve for the reaction at O and the tensions of the cables. We want to let F be 80 pounds, the magnitude of that force at the top, and the moments in X and Y be zero. These are essentially redundant moments anyway. So what we're going to do here is make O into a universal joint. So it resists only the twisting moment. That really works just fine because TA and TB would take up any slack and keep the system in static equilibrium. So these are our six equations of motion. If we rid ourselves of MX and MY, we now have five equations in five unknowns, not counting this one down here. Our unknowns will be OX, OY, OZ, TA, and TB. We can put this into a matrix form where we consider in each of these equations the coefficients of these five unknowns. So the first equation it comes from the sum of the forces in X. This looks like there, there's, a, there's a 1, that's the coefficient of OX. There's no OYs and there are no OZs. The coefficient of TA would be 0.46499. The coefficient of TB would be negative 0.54882. And the constant in that equation is 0. So at this point we can say that this matrix multiplication will give us exactly the equation of motion we had up here. 1 times OX plus 0 times OY plus 0 times OZ plus 0.46 times TA minus 0.55 times TB equals 0. We're going to do the same thing with all the rest of the equations of the rest of the rest of the equations of motion, taking the coefficients of each of the terms. Now notice that on the right hand side here, because of this minus F, we now have an 80. When we move minus 80 to the other side of the equation, we get a positive 80. The sum of the forces in the Z does not have a constant, but the sum of the moments in X does. This is going to have a minus 0.24412 times TA minus 2.3050 times TB. And here I have plus 7F on the left-hand side of the equation. When I move that to the right-hand side, I get minus 560. And the sum of the moments in Y, notice that these do not have any multipliers of the OX, OY, and OZ. So the first terms there are going to be zero, and there is no constant in the sum of the moments in Y. We're going to call this matrix A. This is the vector B. And this is the vector C. So A times B equals C. Or equivalently, B, which is what we want to know, is the inverse of A times C. So if we want to plug this into MATLAB, we can use a bracket and spaces between each of the terms to define a vector. I want to make a matrix, not a vector, so I'm going to separate my rows with a semicolon. Separate columns with a space. Now I have run out of space on my row. So I'm going to put in a semicolon to end the second row of my equation and put an ellipsis at the end of my MATLAB command to say I'm continuing on to the next line. Extra spaces make no difference. You can just keep going with them. That's the end of my fourth row, a uh, third row. Here's my fourth row. Again, I've run out of room, so I'm going to put another dot, dot, dot at the end and continue on the, la the last row because... That's the end of my matrix. I'm going to close it with a bracket, and I don't want to see that I, I know that I just typed it in right. So I put a semicolon at the end of my command to say, I'm done with that. My vector C is 0, 80, 0, minus 5, 60, and 0, but that makes a row. I actually want to make a column. So I'm going to say transpose that, which you use in MATLAB with just an apostrophe. And your row, and your command with a semicolon if you don't want to see the output. And now all I have to say is B, which is my answer, is in A times C. Uh, now I do want to see the answer there, so I'm not going to put a semicolon. And it spits out 0, 0, 186.67, 127.44, and 107.98. That's the vector it gives me. Now I can say that this is in the same order as my array of unknowns. So OX is going to be 0, OY is 0, OZ is 187 pounds, TA is 127 pounds, and TB is 108.